Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV and also welcome back to my Linux Crash Course series. This series has a ridiculous number of episodes in it, but thankfully you can watch most of them in any order, but in each episode I cover a very important Linux related concept. This time around what we're going to do is take a look at the SS command. And this one is really cool because it pertains to networking and networking in Linux is a ton of fun. And the SS command is a very important command to learn because it helps you keep an eye on what's connected to your Linux server. You can look at open ports, open sockets, what's listening, it's very useful. But before we get to that, I need to take a moment and mention today's sponsor, ThinLink. ThinLink is a Linux-first remote desktop solution that gives you the ability to access your Linux-powered device from anywhere. Whether you use Linux at home, at work, or even if you have a home lab, ThinLink is a fast, powerful, and effective tool for accessing remote desktops or even setting up a centrally available terminal server. Also, ThinLink is great for learning Linux since not all of us can afford to wipe our current OS on our device just to learn something. With ThinLink, you can easily and quickly create your own centrally available learning resources. So all of you Linux learners out there, you can set up your own learning environments, which is pretty cool. Another great use case is to isolate your production environment from the internet. And with all the crazy security stories nowadays, isolation is a great way to deal with that. You can even set up an icon on your desktop that will launch a remote instance immediately connecting you to what's important. And best of all, ThinLink isn't just any remote desktop solution, it's a Linux first product that puts everyone's favorite Tux powered platform front and center instead of the strictly obligational support that we get from other companies. So support Linux learning by checking out ThinLink, I would really appreciate it. As always, thank you guys for supporting Learn Linux TV, I really appreciate it. Now let's dive into the SS command. All right, so let's get started. First, we can view the man page for the SS command by typing man and then SS. And that'll give us a preview of some of the options that we'll be seeing in this video. I'm not going to make you read all of that right now, so let's press Q to quit out and let's check out the SS command. And perhaps the most basic usage of the command is simply typing SS. Now let me make my font size a little bit smaller here, so that way you'll be able to see it a little bit better. And let's try that again. As you can see, when I scroll up, there's quite a bit of output here. And that makes sense because SS by itself will show all connections. And on this system, there's going to be quite a few. However, other options that we'll use with the SS command will help us narrow that down a bit. Here's a variation of SS that is especially useful, SS-T. What that's going to do is show TCP connections specifically. As you can see, we have far fewer lines of output now, and the output is actually easier to read. Now I'm going to make that even more useful by showing listening TCP connections by combining options L and T. Now in my case, they were pretty much all listening, but you get the idea. SS-LT is going to be a variation that you're going to use quite often. Anyway, SS-LT is definitely one to remember. Now similarly, if you are interested in UDP instead, what we could do is type dash U for UDP, and I'll add A because I want to see all connections that are UDP. And we have a few here, nothing too egregious, but if you do want to check your UDP ports as well, then use the dash UA options. Actually, another variation that might be even more useful is dash LU for listening UDP connections. And in my case, they were all listening, so the output is going to be the exact same. But anyway, SS dash LU is one to remember for UDP. Now, another variation that I think is particularly helpful is SS dash S. What that's going to do is give you statistics surrounding your network connections. However, it's even more useful when you combine it with watch like this. When you do that, it's going to refresh every two seconds, and that way you could keep an eye on what's going on on your server. Once you're finished looking at it, you can hold Control and press C to break out of it and return to the command line. Now, a few more quick options that I want to give you guys. SS-4 as well as SS-6. Let's take a look at the output of SS-4. And what that's going to do is specifically show you IPv4 connections. And when you add the dash six option, that's going to show you the same thing, but with IPv6. 
I don't have any IPv6 connections on my end, but if I did, they would show right here. Now, one final tip I want to give you guys comes from techmint.com, which is a website you can check out for more Linux learning. I found this example on their website, so what I'm going to do is type it out, and then I'll explain what it does. Now, what this command is going to do right here is specifically show us port 22. So if we want to find out if SSH is listening, for example, and that was all we are interested in, we can use this command right here, and it works because SSH uses port 22. But on your end, you could change port 22 to 80 or 443 or whatever it is you want to check. But what this is going to do is limit the output specifically to that port. So when I press enter, watch what happens. So now, as you can see, we could check our SSH connections. Now, of course, there's other options that we can go over when it comes to the SS command, but the ones that I gave you in this video are the ones that you'll use most often. And there you go. In this video, we learned the basics of the SS command. It's definitely a useful command, so I hope you wrote down some really good notes for this one. You'll definitely need it in the future. Anyway, speaking of the future, I have all kinds of great episodes coming in this series and other videos as well. So definitely subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux to make sure that you see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, though. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.